What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at a move that I decided I wanted to do and I'm not sure it was the right move. Little back information here. Several months ago, I picked up the Leica M10 after just falling in love with the Q2. Now, if you've been on this channel a while, you know that I primarily shoot Sony for my commercial and professional work. I picked up the Q2 for personal stuff and then started working that into my commercial work and then picked up an M10 for personal stuff and then started using that in some of my commercial work as well. I just love the Leica look and the Leica system. And this channel has kind of been built on my Leica journey. I started this channel, really started it back in January comparing the flagship R Sony, the Sony a7R5, which I only had for like a month, to the Q2, which I only had also for like a month. And that video to date has been my highest watched video. I think it's somewhere like around 35 to 40,000 views just since January. And my channel, when I launched that, had just like 100 people subscribed. And today there's 10 times that, more than 10 times that. So it's been a really cool journey in just a three and a half month or so window. And shooting this Leica M10 has been just a pure joy. I personally enjoy this system more than any other camera I've ever owned. There's something about shooting fully manual with manual focus and just turning off any technology like the live view or whatever and just rolling with a camera the size the way it looks the lenses it's just been a beautiful joy to shoot this camera but i've had one issue the entire time and that is the last time i shot a camera that was sub 30 megapixels was maybe 2016 i think yeah i think it was 2016. <laughs> Back when I shot Canon, I had the 5D Mark IV, which was like 30 megapixels or so. Then I switched to Sony and had the a7R III, still have it, great camera. And then the a7R IV, 61 megapixels, and then the 5, also 61. So in my head, there was this limitation, this inability to really crop or get fine details and the way I shoot for clients, especially with commercial work, sometimes I feel good in the moment when I shoot, but then when I go back and review my files, I just want to punch in a little bit, even for family stuff, like pictures of my kids. Sometimes I just want to punch in a little bit. And unfortunately, just working with 24 megapixels has left me feeling like I really can't do that. Yet, the M10 is a perfect camera, I think. Like, they're, the only thing I would change about the M10 would be to add more megapixels. So that's what I did. I picked up an M10R. And it could be that I'm not used to it yet, but I kind of feel like I may have made a mistake. So let's talk about why. Now, like I said, the M10, I believe is a perfect camera. And if you don't need, or you aren't used to shooting high megapixels all day long, this to me is the pinnacle of Leica. And you might be asking in 2023, why I didn't just get an M11. Well, the answer is the M11 is insanely expensive. There's a very small market of used and the used M11s are not even that much cheaper than new. And I rarely, if ever, buy new gear. I picked up this M10 locally and the M10R semi-locally through eBay, but we could drive to each other's house. And the first thing I do whenever I get a new camera is compared to the camera that I've been shooting with. So I did this comparison, which we are about to do on our own as well. But before I even get into showing you the difference between these two cameras, I'll tell you some of my first impressions. And just as a reminder, I'm not gonna go into all the specs as I'd say in other videos because you can easily look that up. So let's not waste our time with it. The big thing you need to know, this M10R is a newer camera with much more resolution coming in at 40 megapixels compared to the 24. So my first impressions of the M10R, three things that have made me feel like maybe it was a mistake to grab this camera. And I'm gonna talk about the least important to most important. The first thing is the meter. I have noticed throughout today, as I've shot these cameras together, that they both believe a properly exposed photo looks different. I was really hoping for the same meter, 
but it's not. The M10 exposes things a little more close to reality in, in my mind. I, I shoot like right at zero or just a touch under exposed. And for the most part, what I see whenever I go back and review my cameras is pretty close to real life, but not so with the M10R. What I noticed as I was shooting around and even comparing the two together was that the M10R was much more aware of highlights and the multimetering and therefore tend to underexpose the room if there was a bright light source. So for instance, my window in my front living room gets a lot of sun in the afternoon and the M10R when I was taking pictures of my kids in the living room was exposing for the window, whereas the M10 was exposing for the room itself. And I found that kind of interesting and I, and I understand why. I mean, my Sony cameras, when I'm multimetering, they're gonna meter off of the window as well. Today with the M10R, I haven't felt like it was really predictable as I was metering, but I will say I'm not used to it. And I'll acknowledge that, which is why I would rank it as the least important on my list of three things. The second thing is the M10, when I take a photo, has much more green in the shadows, which is a look that I like a lot. Even whenever I set them both exactly the same, not auto white balance, I set them both to 5200, exact same settings and took a photo of the same thing. When I reviewed the M10, it just had more warmth more green in the shadows and it it looked more like i've been used to obviously the m10r had more magenta tones not green was a little cooler even though it was at 5200 just like the m10 was and i think the word i'm looking for maybe is it was a little flatter it didn't have just as much like punch right out of the camera as the m10 does and i totally get that because again i shoot sony's r cameras which are very high resolution tend to be a little more on the flat side because of the dynamic range you have available to you in post and even when i did that video about does this does the sensor matter which you can find right up here i always point on the wrong side i think it's on this side you can take a look at that and see that the sony photos the a7r5 with this summicron lens compared to the m10 with the summicron lens is the Sony photos just look flatter. High resolution cameras with a lot of dynamic range tend to look flatter. And I have found that to be true of the M10. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just wasn't expecting it. I was kind of expecting the same level of punch and, and tone as I was getting into my M10, but it's not the case. And here, the number one thing that's making me feel like maybe I made a mistake is that the M10R, in just a short time this afternoon of shooting around my yard, the M10R froze on me three times. Three times I had to take the battery out to reset the camera because all of the buttons locked up, including the power, wouldn't even turn off. My M10 has frozen on me zero times, never once, but the M10R froze on me three times today. I believe I was able to recreate the freeze and here's what I found. If you are shooting with a high shutter, anything over one over 500, honestly, which that's not even that high, but one over 750, one over 1,000, up to one over 4,000, if you are shooting with a high shutter, you're using the live view on the back of the camera, which by the way, I rarely if ever use the live view, but I was using it just testing it around the yard. And you have exposure simulation turned on, which means that the live view on the back of the camera is showing you your current exposure. I don't know why you wouldn't have that on if you were using live view. If you do those three things, odds are you're going to see this camera freeze up. Now, of course, it could be the SD card, but I use multiple SD cards, still froze. And all of my SD cards are the same, so maybe the Lexar 1667 card doesn't play nice with the M10R, but it plays nice with my A7R5. I've never had a single problem. That's an incredibly fast card. And I wasn't shooting burst or anything, I'm just shooting. So I, I, I'm unlikely to believe that it is the SD card. So the first thing I did was I hopped on Google and tried to find out if this is a, a known issue. And I found people with an M10P and an M10M and an M10R that all had experienced freezing, which I was unaware of and didn't know that was a thing. Now I'm running the latest firmware, everyone else is too that's having this issue, but apparently it is a known issue with the M10R 
and with the M10P and with the M10M, but doesn't seem like it's an issue with the M10. This has me greatly concerned because in a couple of months, I've got a pretty big trip where I'll be gone from home for a significant amount of time. Kind of a mul multiple reasons, one of them being uh, obviously my photography business and video work, as well as taking that opportunity since I'm gonna be pretty far from home to visit some family that is also far from home. You'll find out more about this trip at a later date. But I'm a little worried that what if I'm walking around and I'm out for the day and the camera keeps freezing up? That doesn't sound like it's gonna be a great experience. So I'm hoping I can replicate this problem enough to know what not to do, or I may just be returning the camera. And this is a little premature. I got this camera in the mail today. So this is my gut reaction to it. I, I, that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to be able to either look back and say, you know what, I resolved those things, or look back and say, yep, I made the right call by sticking it out with the M10. Luckily, I've had good conversations with the seller and we both are interested in making this work and figuring out what we can do to resolve the issue if there in fact is an issue. And I'm really hopeful that my first experiences with the M10R do not play out to be my long-term experiences. I hope that whatever is going on, I can figure it out or get it taken care of in a way that allows me to spend many years with this camera. But as of right now, I'm just not certain that that's going to be the case. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set up just a simple little scene here, throw some light on it and take a photo with the M10 and with the M10R. And we're gonna take a look at those photos so you can see and judge for yourself the color differences, the exposure differences, and I'm gonna expose them identical. And I'm gonna base it off of the M10's exposure because that's what I've been shooting. Okay, we're gonna build a scene of this beautiful guitar. Custom built by one of my good friends for me several years ago. You can link to his Instagram below. And if you like custom guitars, tell him I sent you. He'll hook you up. All right, let's take some photos. So we're gonna take a look now and see these two photos side by side. All right, so the M10 is on the right, the M10R is on the left. Let's talk about first impressions when we look at these. If you look at the chorus pedal, which by the way, that's a 1980s chorus pedal, legit. You can see just in the slope of the guitar and in the chorus pedal, more green tones than you see on the M10R, which is here on the left. I also feel like the M10R file is flatter and lacking a little life, whereas the M10 honestly just looks good as it even is without any edit on it, just looks good. Part of that though is that the M10R, when exposed with the same settings, is producing a brighter photo. You may recall earlier I said that in my living room it produced darker photos and that just kind of shows you the meter is different than the M10. When there are bright highlights, the M10R is thinking, oh, I've got to make this photo save those highlights. And in a photo like this, when it's a little bit of a darker scene, it's telling me that a proper exposure is this and it just doesn't look as good. If I was to edit the M10R, exposure to get it to match maybe a little better. I don't know, I'd say maybe it's half a stop, maybe three quarters of a stop different. Let's go with three quarters of a stop. But take a look at the slope of the guitar on the back side here. That color right there is that creamy with a little bit of green in it. This is kind of creamy with 
some magenta, maybe a little cooler of a photo. I mean, you can obviously see the difference here. Now, the LUT I use when I edit my videos is not going to tell the truth about the color of this guitar, but the right, the M10, is more true to the actual color of this guitar than the M10R colors are showing over here. When it comes to the depth of the photo, can, do I feel like I can reach in and touch it? I feel like that I can on both. They both have a lot of pop and a lot of contrast, but it's the colors and the way the colors transition that in the M10 is just doing it for me. And guys, I really want to love the M10R. I really do. And I'll go back and admit again, this is my first impression of it. But do you agree with me? Do you feel what I'm feeling when we look at these? You can really see it in the pick guard too, the green tones versus the cooler magenta tones. I just, I find it interesting. And again, I'm curious because I, I, don't, I don't know where this is going to end up. I don't know where I'm going to be next week with this topic. You'll be there. We'll go along together with it. But I would love to hear your thoughts and impressions down below. So hit me up and let me know what you think. Remember that I try to reply to every single comment. Also, I just want to tell you all how much I appreciate this community. Last week, I launched VeryGoodPresets.com and I showed what my Portra 400 preset looked like on various photos from San Francisco. And I cannot believe the response that I've gotten to that video and also to the number of people, number of you that have downloaded that preset. And what makes my heart so happy is getting the DMs from you, showing me how it looks on your photos. That makes my day. And I've been getting those every day now for a week. And it is just such a joy to be able to provide a tool and something that inspires you. So thank you for that. Thank you for letting me be part of that. Uh, I can't express my gratitude for you enough. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the community. Be sure to hit me up below at the links, my website, my mailing list, as well as my Instagram. Reach out and say hi. And I will see you again next time.